How good is Tasmania? Such a little place and so full of four-wheel driving. In fact, the four-wheel driving down there is huge. It really is. It's one of the best places in the world to take a four-wheel drive. And I know you're going to go there one day because you just don't want to miss out on a place like that. So to prepare you for that, we've put together this DVD that doesn't necessarily feature the toughest tracks or even the easiest tracks. It's just got a nice cross-section so that when you get to Tassie, you'll have a rough idea of what you want to look at and certainly what to expect. And I guess the best thing about this is you can pick the tracks you want to look at. So you can show your mates the hard ones and show the missus some of those lovely scenic ones. We began our trip by saying goodbye to the mainland when we boarded the Spirit of Tasmania at the Port of Melbourne. This ship leaves once a day and travels overnight to Devonport while you sleep in one of the well-equipped cabins. We had a great feed in the a la carte restaurant as we pulled away from the harbour and began our 250 kilometre journey across the Bass Strait. We get to Tasmania early the next morning. Too good. We headed southwest along the Murchison Highway towards Queenstown, where we'll be attempting some of the best tracks in the surrounding area. On the way, we've got to drive through Allen's hometown of Queenstown. Queenstown's history has long been tied to the mining industry as the surrounding mountains are rich in minerals such as gold and copper. Since the early 1900s, the minerals have been extracted and smelted right here in Queenstown. The result of this was that the hills surrounding Queenstown were stripped bare of timber to fire the smelters and the sulphur fumes killed everything else. Well, Queenstown assumed a similar look to the surface of the moon. This led to the town becoming somewhat of a tourist attraction because of this so-called ecological disaster. And it was believed that the fauna wouldn't grow back for thousands of years. Well, look at this. 50 years after these claims were being made, it's pretty easy to see that there's been substantial regrowth. So much so that the locals are concerned as driving the tourists away. Oh dear, Mother Nature, eh? She's a force you just can't reckon with. With Sam giving me directions, we're heading west, out of Zeehan and towards the coast. He suggested we take the Climbies track from Trial Harbour and follow it north until we reach Granville. It's been a while since I've been up here. I wonder what's changed. Hey, look at that clear, guys. Looks nice out there today, doesn't it? Mate, goes forever. Unreal, and we're stuck into it too. Look at this. Oh, a few little washaways and ruts. Mm. I hate ruts. I can do anything, but I hate ruts. I can do rocks, I can do mud, I can do clay. Hey mate, this is a, uh, a bit of a slow track from right from the start. No one's been down here in ages. Nah, I've been down here for a while. I feel like a bit of an explorer coming up here. No tyre tracks. Looks like being the first through at the Cape or something. We're going to drop our tyres down here. About 16 PSI, I reckon. Maximum traction is required when the country's like this. It's a totally different terrain again, isn't it? It is. Seaside caper. Seaside, the seaside capers. Yeah, yeah. Not a bloody dream site. All this scrappy little brush stuff. Awesome. Whoa, I don't like the look of this bridge up here. Yeah, the bridge isn't very flashy at all, but it's an easy way to go around it. Oh, yeah, gotcha. The Climbies track stretches all the way up to Granville Harbour. Now, I've been here before, but that was heading south. And since then, a whole lot's changed. The harsh weather has really nailed this end of the coast. The track's all ripped up, and apparently most of the bridges here have just about rotted away too. Go, 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 go. Looks like we're in for a bit of fun. Lovely. Uh, Definitely trolls underneath that bridge. Well, we've got an awful lot of rocks here, and um, the fill that would normally be between the rocks has been washed away, so she's a little bit on the rough side. Oh, and here comes the best of it right now. Now, when you approach something like this, really it's all about looking ahead. 
um, you want to clear those pumpkins and that's what I'm going to try and do here just pick my high spots for the wheels and then I know the pumpkins will be clear whoops <laughs> holy dolly just about hit Cinderella that time this is good it's not just the weather that changes dramatically in Tasmania it's the actual geography the geology of the place itself here we are probably 60 70 k's from where we were just the other day and instead of great big steep mountains with lots of big rocky trenches we've got a whole different sort of country the ground's different it's a lot flatter it's a lot more ripped up in places too there's a lot more clay here and a lot of round stone ah oh, well that's tasmania oh boy looks like the track is closing right in on us well judging by those other bridges i'm a bit nervous about crossing this one you can usually tell when you're coming up to a creek because there's more vegetation around creeks isn't there this one's a prime example it's totally overgrown have a look at this Okay, no lockers, Bob. Time for a bit of bush pinstriping. That's a nice scratch. <laughs> a couple of nice oh. ones. Another couple. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was a uh, that was a bush pinstripe. Well, hello, we've got something interesting coming up ahead here too. Finally, we've got some water. Nice. 20 metre water crossing, Dave. <laughs> Maybe 30 metres. Looks nice and clean, but I'll try and colour it up a bit. This kind of stuff can be really boggy down on the bottom, so it's best to keep up some momentum and hope for the best. With something like this, your best bet is to put the rear locker in if you've got one and give it a few berries. The momentum will get you through. Here we go. We're in it now. We're on, you're the mean. You're the mean. You ready? This track is throwing all sorts of challenges at us. Sam was right. There's bulging rocks, step ups, step downs, washed out ruts, and a few interesting water crossings, too. It's late in the day. We've got about 10 k's to go to Granville. There's a monster storm blowing up here on the west coast. And what have we got? Peat. This stuff is soft and soggy and just like quicksand. And we've got no other way to go except through it. I've already strapped up Milo on the back. Two ideas there. One is if I get through, I can pull the other guys through. If I don't, they can pull me back out. Well, I hope it works. There's only one way to find out, isn't there? Let's give it a go. That's amazing! Jeez, it stinks, that bog. What is that, you dog? <laughs> well, Robert saw what happened to me, so he's not feeling too confident. He's getting the recovery gear ready before he attempts to drive it. Now, that's a great idea because this peat bog is stinky, horrible stuff. You don't want to be kneeling in it, I'll tell you. Come on, Robert! Give it the berries! Let's go get the big girl dirty. Here we go. <laughs> there he goes, sunk on the right hand side. Now the best thing to do is stop spinning the wheels in this situation. You don't want to dig yourself in any deeper. At last we got some mud on it for you, Robert. Hey? Thanks, old boy. <laughs> So we can get out of here in one go. Off we go. All he needs is a bit of a gentle pull and he'll be out. Bang, look at that. He does it. We're out. Yeah, beautiful work. Who's next? Big Dave. Here comes Dave. 
With a bit of fancy wheel placement to straddle the muck, Dave makes it look easy. No wonder Robert got stuck. His tyre came away from the bead and he lost way too much pressure. Ah, well, bit of a clean-up, a good compressor, and we'll be right. Glenno's turn. He's watched what Dave did and he came through no problems. And Alan does the same. Good stuff. We're through the peak bog. But hang on, I wasn't expecting to find this just around the corner. Well, get a load of this. That has really changed. It's all been washed away. It's all steps. And we got a fall all the way to South Africa right there on the side. And when we've done this, we've got the other side to look forward to. A little bit of wheel placement here. Everything should be all right. I've got a feeling I know who's going to be going first, though. This should be good. Better give it a go, eh? Come on, you guys. This is, um... I'm not even excited about this one. I'm actually a bit worried because um, it's tight. It's really tight. And it's not like if you miss it, you take a little tumble and go sideways or something, you know? You just bang straight over the edge, crunch. Yeah, this is big. Anyway, if I can do it, the other guys probably can. So um, we'll give it a go. Here I come. With a bit of luck, that rock is going to pick that wheel up and push it that way a bit. Yep, it did. Okay, so far, yep. Okay. It's a bit technical, this. It's good working with Dave, you know, like he knows his stuff. And the next thing I'm going to do is take it really easy. I'm going to go down here on brakes. I don't have the lockers on, not until I get it straight, then I'll whack the rear locker in. You should see the view over there. Here we go. Hey, we've done it! Oh, yes! Oh, oh. <laughs> On the other side, the big problem's going to be smashing the diff, of course, so I'm just keen to avoid that. I'm just looking for Dave to spot the high spots. I know where my diffs are, and uh, I'm just going to try and avoid it. Oh, thank you, David. Checks in the mail. Beautiful job, mate. I might just go and change my underpants. You didn't even notice that, did you, you stupid dog? You're that close to death. That's one of the silliest things we've ever done. Let's go and see if the other blokes are stupid too. How game is no lockers, Bob, eh? There he is with about 1,500 k's on the 76 series now. And he's coming down this treacherous little bit of slope with nothing but South Africa on the other side of the hill. This is one of the most extreme little climbs I've ever seen. There's quite a bit of water flying through here at the moment, what with all the rain we've been having up the hill. With the tyres let down, he's getting good traction on this rock, and that's what's helping him along. Keep going. That's, that's as hard as I can turn it. Come there, it's forward. That's it, perfect line. Now straight up a bit. You've done it, mate. You've done it. Well done. Thanks, and here we go. There's a pretty nasty step down. We can see how I go with a slightly bigger truck. And it's a sheer fall off to the left. 
It certainly is. Dave's managed to eat everything we've thrown at him with that GU. Beautiful suspension and great driving. That's definitely the key. Plus those lockers both ends, of course. We're now down that and uh, going for the creek crossing. Hang on. A life-threatening moment, Dave. <laughs> we have to wait till we get the perfect shot. <laughs> His truck's just a little bit longer than mine and Robert's, so he's got to think slightly differently in terms of wheel placement. But he's had the advantage of seeing us go through too, so, you know. <laughs> well, we're feeling pretty chuffed, so well, well done, Dave. We got there. Go, guys. Let's go, has me. Here's the cliff on the left-hand side. We're not talking about that bit, mate. We're not going there. No. Well, oh. this is one hairy bit, mate. This, <laughs> this is a hairy bit. You're spot on, Glenn. You're safe now. At least once you get this far, you know there's no turning back. <laughs> Having seen what the rest of us have done, has been figures he's got it pretty much chewed up. But I'll tell you what, you can see from the look on Grover's face, it's not that easy. It really isn't. This is one of those places where one tiny little slip, new history. But Glenno's taking my instructions. I've seen these trucks through a few times now, and I'm well aware of what he can do. Actually, the truck felt really good. Really good, really, really stable through that, didn't it? Yeah. Here comes Alan in the 79. Now, he's not frightened of this track, but he hasn't been here for a while. And even he said, boy, has it changed over the last couple of years. I think what's happened here is that the West Coast storms have just blown all the surface away. Because I came through here at one stage not that long ago, and it was quite a decent track. Right, That's your wheel. Well, well, well. Get a load of this. When it comes up, the dip's just riding across that rock. Uh, it's soft rock, so it's just cutting into it a bit, but the worry is that it's going to pick up and go bang and shatter it. So we'll just try and get this rock into place. has been has got a couple on the other side, and that just might lift that up enough. Now, just see what happens. Off you go. That's it. the cars across and uh, we've done it with just enough time to spare. Wow, what a ride. A little bit of damage only underneath. This is such a wild place. The sea's pounding in, the wind's roaring in from the other side. It's phenomenal. Not a place to come unless you're totally prepared. Your machinery's prepared and you're mentally prepared. Don't do anything silly here guys, you only get one chance. I'll tell you what, it was exhilarating what you wouldn't believe. Well, that last little obstacle sure knocked out some serious time, and we've still got about 10 or 15 k's to go before we get to Granville. Whoa. This is adventure. Chopped up track. Night time. A couple of river crossings indicated. Wow, it's all here in a big package. And we're in the middle of it. Driving at night can be treacherous, and the headlights can really play tricks on your mind. What looks easy can actually be extremely challenging, and vice versa. The trick is to take your time. Don't rush things, and if you're not sure, just stop, get out, and have a look. You could find yourself in some serious trouble if you're not careful. Just take a look at how that track has completely fallen away. That could have been a disaster if I hadn't seen it first. You've got to keep hard to the right here, and there's still a chance of the track falling away with all our weight on it. Oh, hang on. We've got another water crossing coming up. I'm glad I took a look at this bridge before trying to cross it. This bridge is just wasted. I think I might try that other way. Going around didn't present any problems for Milo, but it did feel a little bit spongy underneath. Oh, 
Oh dear. Looks like No Locker's Bob isn't getting the same traction as Milo. With a few more goes, it's clear that he's just not going to make it up here. Uh, we need a wee chap or a snatch up. Well, the best thing to do is turn Milo around and pull him out with the winch. That's got to be the best bet because it's way too tight to do a snatch. To do a snatch, you need a little bit of speed. You need a bit of room to do some speeding. And I've got nothing here at all, and I can't see where I'm going. So, thanks to the TJM Ox winch, which has been working its little heart out this last few weeks, I can tell you, we're going to haul the 76 up that hill. And one of the best things about using rope on a winch like this is that you don't need gloves. Just whack straight in there and do it. Same rules apply for getting out of the road, though. I'm on the megaphone. The radios are all dead. Come on, come up here. Come on, Gwenno, give it the berries. Plenty of momentum, that's what you need. Yes, we're through. Good on you, Al. Done well, mate. Get out of the road, you silly dog. Well, that was it. Our last challenge. And just a little bit further on, and we've hit some civilization and a solid-looking bridge for once. We've made it to Granville at last. Fantastic. Just when you think you've got a handle on a place, you find another corner of it where it's just as berserk. And in my case, that was our trip up through St Albans. I thought I knew Tassie reasonably well. I thought I'd seen the mud and the sand and all the other things you could get there. What I didn't know was that you could get sand dunes in Tassie as big as anything you see anywhere in the rest of the world. That's St Albans. Check it out. The drive down onto the beach was easy enough, it usually is, but the sand was pretty soft too around here. Already it was getting soft and I was starting to worry because even though you can't see it, we had the little Subaru camera car following. Not exactly the ideal choice for this sort of country. Okay as long as it's just beach, but when the beach starts to get soft, well, you know, not always good. Not for an all wheel drive anyway. See that? No vehicle retrievals will be undertaken by Parks and Wildlife. They're too busy pulling their own out. <laughs> I didn't say that. But you make sure you let your tyres down and you know what you're doing. Pete's 80, with those big tyres let down, did it really easy. Milo, still running about 16 PSI, I guess, about now. She was fine too, not really a problem at all. But the Subaru, well, Tim, our producer, was back there giving it all sorts of colour to get it through the sand and doing a terrific job too. But we knew that it wasn't going to last because even with its tyres down to 16, this country is so soft. Now that's going to offer a lot of protection, isn't it, eh? Mmm, yes, wish I had one of those. And you haven't anymore. <laughs> That's all right, we'll pop it in the back for later. And I think we'll just get the Subaru out of here because this is already a bit too serious for the camera car. Good stuff. At the end of the day, we've got serious four-wheel drives and we've got all-wheel drives. And if you're going to... So after ditching the camera car, we're straight back into the sand and off towards those big dunes up on the point. The peak of this is called St Albans Bay. Very fancy name for some of the best sand hills I've ever seen. Not only did they look fantastic, but they were big, soft and smooth. Oh, they were just lovely to drive through. And all the way through I kept thinking, well, look at this. All the locals are sticking to the tracks. There's no problems at all here. And there isn't either, except for one. See the wind starting to blow up about now? Yep, you got it. That looks pretty soft. I'll give it a go, but I could see myself knocking it down to eight pounds before the day's over. 
Yeah, you'll be right, mate. We're supremely confident of you and your ability. Oh, yeah, good on you, Brian. Supremely confident. <laughs> All that wind, at least in this sand right up. Quite a few days to know it. Um, what was that you were saying about ability, Brian? And confidence? Yeah, we meant ability not to be able to do it. <laughs> and I think you, you're actually not going to track him there, so if you, if you can follow those wheel marks again, I think you, you've got him, my boy. Yeah, I think I'll chalk it up a gear, actually, and try it in third. We'll give you a little bit more runway speed. You can give me a push if you want. Big V8 might help. Oh, well, he's, yeah, you know, he's going right. If he could just get a little bit more momentum, he'd roll over the top of that bit of sand. Go, you little green beauty, go, go! Come on, Milo. Yo, beauty! All right! Hey, did you see that? Cool! Straight over the top! Yeah, it's a bit more exciting back there in the 80 with the big V8 screaming along. Suppose you climbed straight over there, did you, Pete? Oh, well, mate, I reckon you rolled the track for us first. <laughs> yeah, there was a bit of track rolling going on there. What we want to do, I reckon, is drive all the way around this beach right to the point on the farther, furthest right hand tip there. And there's a campground in there we'll go and have a look at. I'll tell you what, there won't be too many tents up in this weather. Mate, your day and it's starting to blow up a gale. Hey. But you know us, we always look on the positive side. I reckon that wind's died down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Next morning we're out and about and back onto the beach. You'd never have to travel far in Tasmania for a bit of adventure, and this beach was no exception whatsoever. Nice to see a sign saying we were going the right way, at least. I was starting to worry with Pete and Brian in front. <laughs> oh, these guys are just like you and me. They enjoy their four-wheel driving so much, sometimes they just go around in circles to enjoy it even more. in the air. That was something else. Ooh, there's a lot to be said for a big V8. Poor old Milo barely hiccuped over the top. <laughs> oh yeah, stop laughing you guys. It's just not fair. You know, we've, we've been here before with the tyre pressures, but um, this sand is really soft. I started at 16 PSI, and once I realised how soft it was, I quickly boogie down to 12 PSI. Now, you might think, well, there's not a lot of difference between 16 and 12, but if you think about it in relative terms, it's a 25% drop, which bags the tyre out a whole lot more. And honestly, it's made all the difference. Milo's just walking along here now. No strain, no, you know, diff rattle. It's just taking it really easy. And that's how it should be. 12 PSI. In Tassie, on past trips, I've been down to 5 PSI just to get out of a big drift or something, you know? The only trick there, and it's the same whenever you drop your tyres, just be aware of steering. You don't want to put any pressure on the side of the tyres, so essentially, just keep going straight as much as you can and do your steering very gently in small increments. None of that sort of wacko stuff from side to side, because that'll peel a tyre off the rim almost as quick as I can peel the lid off a bottle at the end of today. Whoa! Now that there's a little bit bigger than that snake you were playing with, Brian. That's alright. We're inside the trucks and he's moving. 
definitely one to let go, I think. And no, guys, I'm not doing a bush cooking segment on Snake. Not while anyone's watching, anyway. Pretty soon we're around St Albany's Bay and driving along a beautiful sandy beach. It had plenty of the local rock on it too, which is no surprise because the headlands are really rocky. And the way the storms come in on this eastern cape, well, I reckon the whole lot's been battered for millions of years and it looks pretty good for it too. Hope I can say the same. I know the handbrake can't. As the tide went out on a very long beach, Pete and Brian are out there playing, aren't they? <laughs> oh boy, they just love being out and about, these guys, they really do. I don't know how they feel. I suppose it's a bit of a driving tip, really. But when it's really windy, like it is now, on a soft sand beach, the one thing you really need to watch out for is the beach, because you can't see it. There's two or three feet of haze happening all over the place here. And it's so hard, because there's no contrast, it's so hard to see where the dips are, where the slopes are, where the rocks are. So, you know, it's not a good time to go too fast. Very good idea just to take it easy. Watch the tracks of the vehicle in front of you. If they suddenly disappear, stop. Because <laughs> he might not have. Around the headland and things have slowed down again because of all the rocks. But the view doesn't slow down. It never does in Tasmania. Just glorious. Absolutely glorious. And so wild. Sometimes in Tassie, you really get the feeling that you're the first person to see something. I love it. I really do. But having said that, you've got to admit, it was a good 10 to 15 degrees colder every day. Colder than Queensland, that is. Not a bad thing for a change, just quietly. Once we were back on the headland, the wind was absolutely incredible. Now, I know that one of the big arguments the Greenies use against us driving over sand hills is the fact that we erode them. Well, have a look at this, guys. Come out of your little concrete towers and get a load of this. This is Mother Nature at work. You could drive up and down here all day in a bulldozer and not make any difference. Not when the wind's blowing like this. It's the wind and the surf that reshapes our country. Not a handful of people driving four-wheel drives. How ridiculous. You know, if you saw it like this, you'd know that for sure. I reckon half of Tasmania shifted a couple of k's to the west that day. The wind was that strong. Poor old Milo looked about three shades lighter too by the end of it. That roof paint doesn't take too good to a good old sandblasting, does it? At one stage, Pete said, just follow my tracks, Ruthie. You'll be right. What tracks? I couldn't see more than about 10 feet in front of me. And by the time I got to his tracks, they were gone. That wind was ferocious, it really was. You can see how the wind shapes the country. It's not the people, it's not the four wheel drives, it's mother nature. She's a lot stronger than any of us. As the day came to an end, we were getting pretty close to Bellingham. And once we got to that beach exit, we knew that we only had a short drive to go and then that'd be the end of the day. Just like the rest of Tasmania, Bellingham's one of those lovely little places. Lots of beach shacks and lovely things to see and do. And once you get down to the river, well, from our point of view anyway, that's it. That's the end of this trip. That's as far as we could go. But I had one more thing to look forward to, and that was a couple of crayfish still in the fridge. You know what? I reckon it's time to go and do a cooking segment somewhere. Come on, guys, enough of this exploring. Let's go and have a look and see if there's something else we can see that looks a bit like a crayfish. 
Tassie has got this magnificent heritage. It really has. As far as history goes in Australia, we don't have much of it. But you know what? They've got most of it down in Tasmania. Old gold mining towns, old ports, wonderful tales about cannibal convicts and all sorts of things. And if you go and do these tracks, the Balfour, and through to Pymans, you'll see what I mean. This is the west coast of Tasmania. We're just north of Granville Harbour and we're going to drive all the way up the coast to the Pymans. And from there, we're going to cut inland to Corinna and I'm hoping we'll be able to do the Balfour track too. Wow, this is one of the wildest, most remote places on earth. An absolute magic place to bring you four wheel drive. First morning of our trip and we're blessed with sunshine. The track's pretty straightforward drive in this weather, but it doesn't mean you won't encounter any dramas along the way, as we were soon to find out. I was just happy it wasn't us. Well, for now. Hey, what's going on? Hey, buddy. Look, <laughs> we're bogged to the hilt up there. Can you give us a... Give us a no worries, mate. I've got a really powerful truck right behind me. Excellent. Good, Good on man. you. <laughs> All right, mate, I'll get out of the road. You're the knights in shining armour. And before we can even start this DVD, we've got to unblock the track. This place is wild. These tracks change from rock to sand and sand to rock pretty quickly as you're driving along. And on a day like today, the sand is pretty soft and easy to sink into if you don't have enough momentum. Especially if you're towing a couple of tons of boat behind you. Just don't run over the strap if you can help it, because it'll get tangled up, it'll take too long. Good go. Off you go, mate. We've got Glenno on this job with a simple snatch out. He should make light work of this with that 80 of his. Yep, no dramas at all. Old Bruce says to the truck, barely noticed it. So I reckon you guys are bush angels. <laughs> Danny reckons we're bush angels for pulling him out. See you fellas, have a good day, eh? Good on you. <laughs> a lot of water on the track, a lot of big dips full of water. No real drama, it's pretty solid underneath on the sand anyway, so it's not a problem. In fact, it's not a bad thing at all because it's washing some of the salt off the truck. But I'll tell you what, if there's this much water this early on this track, imagine what it's gonna be like further up the back there. Water on sand isn't such a drama. Water on mud, water on clay, water on soil, that can get swampy. I reckon we'll be finding a few swamps before the day's out. We haven't done real good on timing the tide today. This tide is uh, right up. Yeah, according to my watch, John, we've, uh, we're just about smack bang on high tide. It's not a monster tide, and the sea's not as bad as it can be. I guess all we can do is give it a go, really. Look at that for a view. It's just glorious, isn't it? The country around here is superb. Working our way through the uh, rocks and puddles up the back of the conical rocks. Um, we're heading up to the Pyman River. I've been here before and it's a fascinating lifestyle, it really is. Especially if you like crabs and abalone. This is a great place. We all knocked our uh, tyre pressures back to 16 for the run up the beach. But after losing, what, two tyres off rims on the camera cars and then Dave's, it starts making you think. And what it made me think was that this is pretty awkward ground. Because even though you've got all this mud and slush and everything else, the sort of stuff you really would like low pressures for, you've also got lots of surprise little rocky ridges and things like that usually hidden under dirty water puddles. And that, of course, is what's peeling our tyres off. So we've pulled a bit of a compromise now. We've gone from 16 back to 25. 22, 25, depending on the weight of the vehicles. Hopefully that'll keep a few tyres on rims. Oh, 
We're on our way to meet our old mate Kim and his dad Mick. They own one of the shacks down here at the Pyman Heads and they've been coming here for years. It's no wonder really, it's just beautiful down here. How are you Kim? Well, Good to see you mate. How long have you been coming here? Over 70 years. What was it like in the early days? Pretty uh, light on for people, not <laughs> many shacks. Yours is one of the first, I believe. Oh uh, yeah, well, there was a couple there before this one. This uh, shack of ours has grown a bit since about 1968. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it used to be Dad's office at Surrey River. Yeah. Uh, after they finished the boss up there, said to him, Mick, you've done a good job. He said, 20 quid and you can have your office. <laughs> so, 20 quid? 20 quid. Yeah. It floated down the minutes. river on a punt. Yeah. How did you come in in the early days? Oh, I was only a pick and shovel road, gravel road, yeah. which is still most of it is now, anyhow, from Savage. What were you driving then? We had a 1936 Ford. Uh, we only drove it down to uh, Crenna there and we hired a boat. Yeah. Uh, the one and a half horsepower Anzani. How about that? <laughs> Mike, can I ask you how old you are? I'll be 90 on the 22nd of December. Fair dinkum. Yep. Every it's... bit of it. This lifestyle must be very good for a man, that's well, all I can say. Worked hard, played hard, yep. had a lot of fun. Yep. Still living. And come down the Pymans a lot. Yeah, still living. Good on you, Mike. Kim was kind enough to give us a guided tour of his shack. He doesn't actually live here, but it's a place oh, to come and get away from it all and live a sort of a more simple life for oh, a this while. this is his old office He's from the side. Yeah. Gas fridge? Gas fridge, yep. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Best one for food? Grog or whatever. Ha, 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 we're ready to go there. Kim knew I'd be interested in some of his toys. Oh, wow, he's got some beauties so too. Watch oh, oh, the rest of the shed fell down. Oh, look at this. Look at the old fat wheel motorcycles. If you could carry one spare on your high Corby, you'd carry one of these. Because you could get out from anywhere with this thing. I haven't seen one in years. Oh, and you've got two of them. Holy dooly. Of course, there's nothing better than a Suzuki four-wheel drive or a little Daihatsu on soft sand and in terrain like this. And they're really popular down here too. In fact, some of them haven't got that much rust. <laughs> it was great to meet Kim and his dad and get a first-hand insight into this area. But if we're going to complete our trip on schedule, we have to say our goodbyes and get moving. Hey, John, where are we going now? Plan is to... Head up the inland track here. We'll see if it's a bit different. Might see some different country. Our only issue is that we've got to make the ferry. No idea how this inland track's going to be. October in Tasmania isn't the best month to be doing this kind of stuff. Well, it is or it isn't, depending on your uh, viewpoint, I guess. This track is chopped up like you wouldn't believe. Oh, Tasmania. Wild, wonderful, free, and very wet. on the same way, but it's like a bit of a rabbit warren. And the other one is that it's going to be dark pretty soon. And the combination, a combination like that, which is one you get a fair bit in uncharted bits of Australia, means you've got to practice a little bit of common sense. And in our case, that means that every vehicle has to be able to see the tail light from the vehicle in front. Now, I'm in front, 
And if I make a mistake and go the wrong track, I'll get on the radio and tell the guys as soon as I can. But as long as they're following me, there's a fair chance we're all going the same way. We're not going to get lost. Well, that's the plan anyway. Whoops. Uh, there's a good opportunity to go another way. And I'll go straight forward. With the day drawing to a close, the last thing I wanted was a mechanical problem. But after that bog hole, I knew something had gone wrong. I snapped the long axle in the high country, and uh, we sorted that out. And now we've snapped the short axle. And I guess it's just part of the course, isn't it, Glenno? <laughs> Look at that, eh? It's not the axle that's broken, it's the studs. It's a so, of a pace, though, isn't it? It's a good time. <laughs> it's, a, it's not a good time. It's not a great place. I shoved the cloth up there basically just to stop too much crap going in and too much oil coming out. Right at the moment, the fix is simple. It consists of putting the rear locker on. At least they've got one wheel drive up the back. My big trick now is to lay off the front locker, not that I use it much anyway, until I desperately need it. So really, what I'm doing here is uh, driving along in two wheel drive, diagonally. <laughs> This weather, this track, and two-wheel drive just don't mix. And I knew it wouldn't be long before I got stuck again. The trouble is, it was always going to be in a place that I didn't want it to be. With Milo sitting here in this dirty water, it's just getting into that axle housing. This is a pretty bad situation, guys. How did it all go so wrong? We have to move fast now. It's going to be dark soon. As luck would have it, and as you'd expect with a situation like this, I got stuck again and again. Things weren't looking good at all. Well, at last we're back on firmer ground, and now we're on our way to Karina. So we can board the fat man. Hmm, kind of sounds strange, doesn't it? Oi, get that truck off my belly. The fat man can only transport two vehicles at a time and it costs around 20 bucks, depending on the size of the vehicle. It operates during normal daytime working hours and they sort of change it depending on what time of year. So make sure you check before making your trip. But if you get here sometime in the daylight, there's a fair chance that they'll let you on. The locals here are pretty friendly. Well, we made it at last. All we have to do from here is head north and get on the Balfour track. That's going to be a very tough track, but personally, I can't wait for it. I'm ready for another one. This will be good. They call the ferry the fat man because it, it always sat on a couple of big barrel-like hulls. And it's a terrific ferry. It really is. It's only a short trip, but it's one of those, like the one at the Dane Tree, that you just kind of think of as the gateway to a new frontier. And of course, the Pyman River itself, well, why do they call it the Pyman? because apparently an old convict who used to sell pies in Hobart Town, of all things, this is where he escaped to. Well, 30 k's north of the Pyman and everything's changed again. It's cold, freezing actually, started raining again and the terrain is completely different. We seem to have been climbing for ages and we're in some sort of mountain country. It's just beautiful. Well, with a bit of luck, we'll uh, get to the Balfour track today. We might even get up it. See what happens. The locals reckon the Balfour is tricky enough when it's good. And when it's wet, and at this time of year, after the winter, and all the winter rains, it's not real sharp at all, apparently. But that's all right, that's what we want, a challenge. I reckon it'll be fun. Before they um, punch through this road, the Western Development Road, there was nothing here. Just a handful of tracks. And you know what? There's still nothing here. It's got to be one of the largest patches of wilderness around. Absolutely unreal. Well, 
Well, this is it, guys. This is uh, the Balfour track. It actually crosses the Great Western Road here. Uh, we turn right to go and have a look at Balfour. It's only a couple of k's in, so we'll go and check that out before we check out the uh, track down to the coast. Ruthie, is this an old mining community? Yes, yeah, I, it's all abandoned now. I've never been up there, believe it or not. We've tried a couple of times and always get stopped. But uh, I reckon this time we'll get there. Being an old mining settlement, this place would have had tracks cut into it all over the place. Some to go and fetch timber for the engines, fires, you'd want fires here most of the year, and lots of timber for shoring up mines and things like that too. And then of course you've got all the tracks that people used to get in and out of their claims. Now a lot of these are still here, most of them have been driven over. The only problem is, we've got to try and find the old town. Now I'm betting it'll be on the biggest of the tracks, so we'll just kind of follow through and see what we come up with. Doesn't really matter, does it? This is great fun driving around here. Look at this. I don't care where we are, we'll find it. Just keep looking. John, we must be very close to the old town now, mate. Yep, it should be... Oh, hang on, what's this? Oh, holy dolly. I reckon this is about where it is, but it's not what I expected. Where was this? Middle of nowhere. Someone here. I'll go say good day. Ruthie, what are you doing? <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, look at this. Yeah. Hi, Henry. You should um, come in and have a look. Thank you. Love to. Oh, once again, Richard here has proved to us the great hospitality that Tasmanians offer. He's invited us in to see his collection of artefacts and all the memorabilia he's collected around here from Balfour and put in his shack. The old photographs here are wonderful, but I wanted to know a little bit more about where here is and what Richard's story is. And it's fair to say, I was truly inspired. What's the deal though? What, what, this is where Balfour was then. We well, got this, that bit right. Yeah, this is Balfour, but this is the, it was the Imperial Hotel. Is that it up there? And that's it up there. Far out. And, and I think that's about 1912. Right. I'm not positive. Yeah. So we're, we're in front of the the left chimney, if you can okay, see. Okay, yeah. The original one, you know, like it was half fallen to bits. Oh, that's what it looked like before. Yeah, so we, um, yeah, we just thought we'd put a new front on it just to, oh, I don't know, make it... Make it look good. Make it look a bit better. Oh, it looks pretty good. I love your arch. And this was the commercial room. Oh, okay. It was called the commercial room, and I suppose that's where all the wheeling and dealing Went was on. done at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've bought this block, yep. have you? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And and I notice you've called it Henry's, but, yeah. but your name's Richard. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's Henry's because of Lee, and unfortunately, oh. we lost Lee in in uh, February last year, and he Gee. used to come down here and, and light the fire and as. Oh, that's him and his mates there. there. Him and his mates, they light the fire and they'd have a beer and cook a sausage and oh. and uh, so we just thought oh well you know we'll put this up she's pretty rough and ready yeah but it's here for everybody to use you know it, yes. it's not just for us it's it's for everybody you know fellas like you coming through yeah it doesn't matter and, well, um, yeah, well it, it's that's what she's for it's, everyone's hanging around the fire underneath the roof <laughs> Nobody wants to go anywhere. The commercial room feels really good. The dog's happy in front of the fire. And the dog is over the moon. <laughs> Every now and then when you're travelling, you find places you don't want to leave. And in Australia that can happen a fair bit because it's such a fantastic country and we've got so many interesting people and so many stories in the bush. And um, I've got to tell you, the site of the old hotel here, the shack that Richard and his mates have put together to remember his son, is one of those places. You could quite happily unroll your swag and spend a week here, if you had enough beer. Guys, I think we'd better move on, eh? Because we haven't. So, uh, yeah, we're off.
going to chuck the bra on my line. The other guys are too. Just see if we can uh, cut down some of the water ingress. My problem is I've got holes in the floor. I wonder if I can get a bra for that. Snow. Yeah. Here. Freezing rain. There you go. It's zero degrees outside right now. Wow. This is as cold as I've ever felt it here. So, uh, you know, that wind, wherever it's coming from, is off the snow. This was it, the final leg of our journey, the Balfour Track. Yeah, mate, this is the one that all the locals have been telling us about. If you've got to do any track down this way, they said the Balfour. Goes on and on and on, but looks the John. Oh, it does, mate. I don't think we've got enough time to drain the water off the floor in my life. I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it under my knees. Well, Boy, we knew it was going to be wet up here, but I had no idea it would be this bad. The saving grace is that although the puddles are long and deep, the bottom is fairly rocky. I should get to it anyway. It's just a case of trying to keep some momentum. Every second puddle straight over the bottom, number over the roof here. The biggest drama having watered this deep all the way down the track is that it's going to get into everything. There's going to be water in the diff, water in the box, water in the transfer. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff that's just looking to go wrong, especially when it's gritty water like this stuff. But we'll see how we go. First things first, let's just get through it. When we went through that puddle back there, uh, something went wrong with Milo. I think it's probably just an earth connection, but I've got no battery power. So I'll just give it uh, a quick jump start to get it going again. Give it a go, Glenn. That's the complete view. That's good. Beautiful. Having covered a lot of ground, we've made it about three quarters of the way down the track, and we haven't got that far to go to get to Tema, which is the end of our trip back out on the coast. I'll tell you what though, we made it through some pretty deep water back there, but around the corner we certainly weren't expecting this. Oh wow, we thought that last one was hard. This one's got so much still water in the middle of it that it's possibly going to be a lot deeper. Now, there's only one thing I'm going to try that's slightly different here. I'm going to try it in first gear low range instead of second. I'm going to take a bet that the bottom is as sturdy as the bottom was in the last one and that the water's just as deep. Because what happened last time was the bow wave, correction, the windscreen wave just about overwhelmed the truck. I was pushing that much water in front of me that I think I was going to wind up getting buried, to be honest. Now, apart from having a wet bum, wet feet, wet socks and wet boots, you've got to look on the bright side of things. I'm not too worried about the salt from the beach the other day now. <laughs> I reckon we've washed it all off. Right up, let's go and give this one a go. Submariners, I'd like to report. I'm uh, going to pull over so I can come back and laugh. I mean, sorry, watch you guys. This is the one. Ho, ho, ho. Mate, that's real bad stuff, isn't it? We're floating, Johnny. 
that's up over his bonnet. That's up, that's up his windscreen. Still going. Ready, we started to float there. Deepest smile of the trip. That's um, definitely the longest, deepest water crossing that uh, Milo's ever done, that I've ever done. I've got a wet bum, wet socks, wet boots, wet pants and wet elbows. Are we having fun yet? You bet we are! This is unreal, you know why? Because we got through. And you want to know the really good bit? There's another one just over the hill. So I might as well be wet this side of it, eh? Let's go. A few more splashes later and we've made it to within sight of the finish of our trip. Woohoo! Look at that guys! I can see the sea! Woohoo! I thought we were in the sea back there for a while. Submarine action. <laughs> yeah, well, let's hope this cake doesn't just sort of end, you know, drive it off into the sea. Couple more steps down and we're in the clear. We made it! Well done guys! I think that's the end of the track. Done good. Done fine. <laughs> Fellow submariners. Submariners played <laughs> strong. Thank you. It was interesting, wasn't it? River crossing's the one thing, eh? Yeah. You know, you go in, you a little bit of a dodge and you're out. Sometimes you just thought you're never going to come out of those holes. <laughs> oh, come on, let's pack up the bras and get out of here. <laughs> Bunch of girls. A lot of people get the idea that the best four wheel driving in Tassie is right on the outskirts, you know, the coastal bits and stuff like that. Not necessarily the case, as me and my mate Trout found out when he took me exploring all around Scottsdale. This one was fun. Here we are in northeast Tasmania. Now we've done the west coast before, we've done some of the northwest, we've done some beaut trips in Tasmania, some of the best adventures and the hardest off-roading I've ever seen. But we're back to have a look at something a little bit different. That's Scottsdale down there, and all around Scottsdale, within Cooey of Scottsdale, you could say Scottsdale's the hub, really, of some of the best four-wheel driving tracks I've ever seen. It's a terrific place, it really is, but like the rest of Australia, what you really need to see on the right track is some local assistance. And that's what I've done here. We've got a couple of real good blokes. Lyndon, say g'day. G'day, I'm Lyndon. Everybody calls me Trout. We'll find out why later on. Probably because he's got to swim for his Nissan. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Lyndon brought along Luke. G'day. And he's going to need Luke, I reckon, because uh, Luke looks like he's pretty fit. He'll be a good man on the winch strap. Now that's the, yeah, righto. That's the other thing we've got going here, okay? We've got a bright red Nissan Patrol versus a dirty old green Land Cruiser. <laughs> now the next thing we've got going here, of course, this is pretty obvious, is that um, let's say the energy and the enthusiasm of youth versus the treachery and cunning of old age. 
Someone around here is old, it might be me. But <laughs> that, that'll work just fine. You're not going to need a walking phone to get over to your truck and hop in. Oh, good on you, mate, good on you. I hope you've got a big bag of nappies in there, because I reckon you're going to need them before the day's out. We're going to see some terrific country. Come along and have a look. Come on, guys, let's go. I was going to say I'll race you down to the bottom of the hill, but I'll probably have to take it easy and pick up a few of the bits on the way down, eh? <laughs> Pretty soon we're heading down Mount Stronach, which is about four and a half k's from Scottsdale. There's some awesome views up here in northeast Tasmania. It's really popular with the bushwalkers, but by crikey, when you've got a truck, you can see a few places in a hurry too. It's got an altitude of 500 metres, and you can bet that the temperature here can run really low. Even in summer, you'll see sub-10 degree days all day long. The cold's playing a bit of havoc there with Milo, actually. She's smoking it up a little bit just every now and then. Doesn't really like the cold, my old girl. A little bit like me, you know, built in Queensland, likes it warm, but that's all right. One up for the patrol, eh? Hey, didn't you get up there, Ruthie? Oh, it was easy, but I, I just wanted to show you how it was done and, and take, you know, take the harder part. Ah, uh, you're going to have to do better than that. Oh, I get away. That was nothing. Hang on, I'm busy. I'm picking up missing bits again. <laughs> yeah, right. This track was pretty easy going because it hasn't rained here for a while. You can imagine what it would be like in the wet, though. Mate, down again. I'm going so slow behind that patrol that Milo's in danger of freezing up. <laughs> so I've got to get a bit of warmth into her. Ah. There you go, hold that up for me. It's got a, it's got a thermostat, but um, in, in cold air like this, and when it's doing a lot of idling, it runs that cool, but I've got to do this just to get a bit of warmth in it. Plus, you know, it's a little bit embarrassed at having to follow a patrol around. <laughs> we'll fix that patrol. It's real good fun actually driving with these guys because they're right into it. They love it. What they lack in age, they're making up for in just sheer enthusiasm. But I'm going to keep chucking them a line, you know. I just can't resist. It's too good. We followed the boys northeast along the Tasman Highway towards Winalia until we hit the Banker Road turn off. And from there on, we're heading north into the Bass State Forest District. It's great to hit the dirt road and know that you're heading to the next spot. But I'll tell you what, these guys, you know, they might be young, but by crikey, they know what they're on about. This is going to be really good fun. You been through here before, Trev? Yeah, not much water today, though. Eh? Hey, what was it like last time? Oh, no, we'll down here. Yeah, it there in the Zorki, she's washed it down there, so I know. <laughs> How far did you go? Oh, I'm just down about past that rock a little bit. Uh, there's a couple of good catches back there. Yeah. It's, it's um, a bit of a drought here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so water's yeah, down enough. everywhere. It ain't just enough to keep it flowing. It's all right, mate. It's beautiful Tassie water. Come on, let's give it a go, eh? Funny, isn't it? What they call a drought in Tasmania, we'd be so happy to see up in Queensland. This water crossing isn't that hard. The boys have been through here quite a few times. But you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Come on, mate! Oh, he made hard work out of that, but I think he's kidding me a bit. Big tyres and lots of clearance. That seems to be the answer in Tasmania. Starting to wish I had a bit of that myself. Here's my chance to show them how it's done, eh? A little bit of the experience of old age. And it nearly went all wrong. <laughs> Good old Milo. Might squeak a bit, but it makes easy work out of things like this. I won't even bother telling the lads that I've got a locker button pushed in here. And who are you to talk? I mean, you were telling me your old man comes through here 
towing a trailer full of trees, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, but he drives a Toyota, doesn't he? Yeah, he doesn't drive up that track, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> righto, righto. <laughs> okay, well, let's, you know, come on, march it out. Let's see what you can do. All right. I'll, I'll be right behind. I'll give you a little push, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Young fella made that look easy, didn't he? Better do the same. Ah, oh, good old Milo. Just makes it look too easy sometimes. Bit of hand throttle and up we go. Ruthie, you ready for the mud? Yeah, no worries, mate. Toyota won't have any problems at all. I well, hope you got a nappy, have you? Nah, uh, you'll need a nappy to wipe the mud off your face. Oh, good on you. Hey, we'll see. You just march it out, all right? All right. Look at that. But the air it's pushing up. That means that means it's porous. <laughs> which means there's a fair chance it's of this going. And and, and it, I bet it gets deeper, does it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that bottom corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, go in with you. Yeah. Go for it. Go right for right, 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 out of the road. Hey, um, well you're missing, has it got enough balls to pull me out? Yeah, sure has. Yeah, right. Eh? That's why I've got to go first, eh? Yeah. Yeah. That's a bit of treachery for you. Hey, use his snatch strap and then it'll get dirty. Yeah, but the real treachery is I'm going first. And as everyone knows, you've got more chance going first through the mud than you have going second. Right -o. Trout pretty much assured me I'd clear this no worries because all his mates had. And look at that, bang, straight up to the axles, all over, sitting on the bottom. Going nowhere. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, can hear Luke saying, "I told you so." Told you already. Ah, oh, you guys knew that was going to happen, didn't you? It's not the first time a Nissan's pulled me out in living memory. That's for sure. Oh, a bit embarrassing, eh? You did it easy, though. Did it easy. Oh, doesn't matter how many times you do it, it's always fun. Well, I can tell you one thing for sure, there's no way your patrol will get through there. <laughs> he set me up. He set me up. Can you believe it? That young fella set me up. <laughs> oh, shut up. It was fun, but. <laughs> Good. And when you do come through, you'll know it's because I went through on the Toyota first, <laughs> OK? So I've solved all your problems there, Trout. It's just too easy, mate. Doddle in the park, <laughs> hey? I'll say, he's got to give it a go. <laughs> oh, boy, he got a whole lot further than Milo, anyway. Just goes to show what lifting tyres do, eh? But he didn't make it out. Couldn't quite get that last lip up. Oh, too good. I would have been so embarrassed if he'd shot straight through there. See that? How good was that? He nearly did it. I hate to say this, but that's a very impressive truck. Milo's snatch points aren't working off the rear at the moment. Or they're so suspect it's not okay. funny. They just about pulled through the big plate washers, so I decided to use a tree trunk protector around the whole rear of the bar. That was good enough to give Trout all the pull he needed just to pull out, but look at this. The worst damage on my Toyota <laughs> has been caused by hauling out a Nissan. <laughs> 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 Oh, 
slow going for a fair while here as we work our way through the forest. What's the trick here? You'd want to stay on those logs, wouldn't you? Yeah, just put your driver's side wheel on the log. On that one there, yeah. Straight up. You're not, you're not kidding me again, are you? No. I'll show you. All right. OK. There's plenty of these river crossings in Tasmania. In fact, Tasmania is just riddled with creeks and rivers. And in the old days, they used all that incredible timber around the place to bridge them up. And time after time, you'll come across great big sturdy old crossings where all the wood's just rotted out from years of rain and all the rest of it. And that's what we've got here. Someone's patched it. Quite a few people have been through it. Trout's probably taken his club through here a few times. She's a bit of a mess. But the trucks get through, no worries, and that's a good thing. All a question of picking the right log. Oh, look at that. Someone left a tin line here. <laughs> we'll take that with us, eh? I don't know what it is, you know. It's such a beautiful country and people go and stuff it up like this. <laughs> the next day we head back down the Tasman Highway towards Derby. The boys decide to take a short detour to Billycock Hill. Bit of a favourite hill climb here with the local four-wheel drivers. I thought I'd go for a bit of a walk, but I tell you what, what an effort. This was one steep hill. And not a lot on either side either, just those trees. Not a lot to stop you. Be pretty easy to cock up Billy Cock, trust me. I've seen some steep hills, but normally you just get one steep bit, you know, in the middle of the hill or towards the top normally. This thing starts out steep, gets steeper in the middle, and then gets really steep at the top. And there's a rock ledge there at about the three quarter point where it just about stands right up. This is going to be one for treachery and cunning, I reckon. Fair dinkum, these guys are crazy. Going to get her a crack, Hey? Going to give her a crack? He's oh. too scared. He's old age is catching up on him. <laughs> Stop grinning. You know, in the wheelchair. Oh. <laughs> Trout just launches in with all the momentum the old patrol can drag up, which is quite a bit, really. The hill hasn't been driven for a little while by the look of it, so he's probably got a slight advantage there. Nobody's kicked too much back, but by crikey, this is an awesome effort from the young fella. It really is. And I reckon old Luke was hanging on to his backside too. He's going. He's got to the tough spot. He's gone a little bit further. He might do it, you know. Oh, bugger me. He's done it. Yep, he's over. That's an awesome effort. The worst thing about that is, I'm going to have to do it in my lane now too. Oh, jeez. Oh, good idea, mate. That was awesome. That was a good idea to let your dog do the driving. He's <laughs> <laughs> He's too scared. Now well, here I go. Into it. Milo hasn't got the revs of the patrol, so I'm just going to rely a bit more on traction than momentum and see how we go. There go the lockers, in they go. Oh, no. The size of the holes they've dug. We're actually stuck in a hole. Oops, there we go. Come on, old girl, we can't go backwards. Just go back a little bit, I hope. Hanging on the brakes here. I probably needed to start my run up somewhere in Queensland though to get that sort of momentum up. The boys dug a couple of big holes here and I've just got to dug them up some more. So unless I can go up the left of the track there completely, we ain't going to make it and that's going to be embarrassing. This is more of a slow motion battle than Trout's was, that's for sure. What old girl. The worst of it gone. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> we gotta do it. That was really exciting. He's good, that kid. I'm not gonna tell him, but he's really good. He really thought that out, you know, because by going first, he got first crack at it and got to dig it up a bit. And I got the rest. And while I made it, I'm really surprised. And there was a couple of moments there where we were hanging on a bit of an angle. And if it hadn't been for the front locker pulling us out, I think we would have come back down sideways. Come on, what else you got? That was too easy. <laughs> the only thing that got me over that ledge and, and not coming back down rolling was the front locker. Uh, it, it just paid for itself several times over that front locker, Peter Wow. Now try it without the lockers. Right up. <laughs> only I'll go Sorry. first. <laughs> about a half hour's drive down the road and we reach the town of Derby. This is about 103 kilometres northeast of Launceston and it's an old tin mining town overlooking the Ringaruma River. I was showing the boys a few of the finer points of uh, the old gold fossicking and filling up my water bottle too, something you can do a lot of in Tasmania because there's so much good fresh water. About a big flake. Yeah. Is that a big flake of gold? That one there. Or is that mica? Here, let me just... Okay. Nah, mate, that's not gold. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, the locals, they all get together here. They make their own rafts out of skitter tubes and stuff in October. And they have this event called the Derby River Derby. And they push in their homemade rafts up here off the grass banks and just, you know, float down 6 k, 7 k. It takes about an hour, Trout reckons, and he won it one year with his mates. It's just fantastic. What a terrific event. You know, it's so much fun. And the water is crystal clear. You can taste the rain in it. You can taste the purity in it. I can see a couple of flecks of gold hanging out of the wall over there. Oh, I love this place. I'm really seriously considering just up and stumps and staying here. After the hill climb, the boys decided to take me up to Cascade Dam for a bit of peace and tranquility. Luke said something about, you know, a little doze in the sun for the old fella. <laughs> yeah, well, look at that for a bit of peace and tranquility. This road, I noticed, must have been cut in many, many years ago. It really must have been, because there was an old convict built stone wall running up the side of it. The track closes in here a bit. Look at this, we're going to have trees in the window any second. So much for it being a leisurely drive through the country, eh, Trout? This is a real bash around here. Oh, Milo's hopping all over the place. <laughs> He's a little rough. <laughs> Oh, wow. Tell you what, the coil sprung patrol handled this a whole lot better than poor old leaf sprung Milo. But we're not giving up here. We're not saying anything. We're just doing it. Come on, old girl. Look at that GQ. It just walks, doesn't it? Trout's got about five inches of lift there and some big tyres. That makes all the difference in this sort of country. And I'm just sneaking in the compressor and the rear locker. Just uh, make it a little bit more stable up this slope. Don't have to tell the boys that, eh? This track's still very much open, but more and more tracks like this that access the backs of dams and old mining sites and some of the best parts of the Australian bush are being closed down. Why? For no reason at all. No real reason anyway. Sometimes, you know, you get the idea they just hate people. They don't want people in there. Lock out the people. And that's not the way to protect the environment. The way to protect the environment is to share it. Everyone comes and can get in there and have a look and enjoy it like this. This is fantastic. 
in some parts of Australia they'd shut this track already just because they don't want people going in there for some stupid reason. Wow, this is just awesome, isn't it? I guess if I had to list the top five things I'd take to Tassie, apart from someone else's girlfriend and a whole pallet full of free beer, it would have to start with tyres. Look, Tassie is a really tight little country. It's got very few straight roads at all, and there's a fair chance of precipitation. So even on the sealed sections, you're talking lots of tight corners, and then once you get off-road, man, you're gonna need good tyres. You want tyres that can handle four PSI, like the time I had to climb out of a sand bowl down at Sandy Cape or tyres that can sit on 15, 14, 16 PSI all day because that's the kind of place it is. Get your tyres sorted before you go. A winch is a lovely thing to take to Tasmania. That's winch with an I, not an E. And that's because in Tassie, you never know when you're going to get stuck. It's like the rest of Australia, but more condensed. I've had to pull myself off rocks. I've had to shift trees, a really good use for a winch. A winch is a really handy thing. If you've got a whole bunch of mates with winches, you don't need one. But I'll tell you what, there's a couple of things you need on your truck, one of them's got to be a winch. One of the wonderful things about Tasmania is that it's got the freshest water in the world. Unfortunately, it's got heaps of it. And even on a dry day, you can never be too sure it won't wind up being wet by the end of it. So that means that on your must-take list, you've got to have a snorkel, okay? If you don't have a snorkel, then have a bra. And if possible, take both. Take a nice big water bra and take a snorkel too. I don't know how many times. The Balfour track is, of course, the typical example, but so many times with Tasmania, it's all been about keeping water out of the engine to keep going until the end of the day when you can have one of those Tasmanian beers made with the freshest water in the world. Yep, makes it all worthwhile, but you've got to get there first, so take a bra and try and get a snorkel on your truck first. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Tassie's such a little place, I probably don't need my toolkit and all my spare parts. Well, yes and no. I once went six days on the West Coast, didn't see anyone else at all. It can be a very lonely place once you get into the bush in Tasmania. And of course, the best thing about having your toolkit and your spares, even if you're not the best bush mechanic in the world, you just need to patch that vehicle to get to somewhere where they can do a decent job on it. And that might not be too far away, but without the toolkit and the spares, you're just gonna stay where you are and you could be lost for a long time. So make sure you pack your toolkit and your spares because believe it or not, there's some really tough stuff in Tassie. Can do some damage to your truck. I'm a big fan of telling people, especially when there's a whole lot of vehicles going on a trip, don't double up on stuff. But in Tassie, there's one little exception and one must have I'd have in every truck and that's recovery gear. Now, as much as anything, that's because you never know when you're gonna need a whole lot of recovery gear at once in Tasmania. I've used anything up to three winch extension straps. We've used winches two at a time. We've used tree trunk protectors, three, all in the one recovery. And then of course, if you get stuck in one of those fast flowing creeks on a beach or something, well, you're gonna need all the recovery gear in the world. So make sure that you don't leave your recovery gear home when you go to Tassie. And I hope you don't need it. You never know. One of my favorite tracks in Tassie is the Clinis track. And that's for a whole lot of reasons, but not the least being because that one track encapsulates what you can expect from any Tassie trip. And that is fantastic scenery, awesome four wheel driving, a sense of being right out in the middle of mother nature like you wouldn't believe and because of the people you meet along the way because in Tassie that can be really special too. Welcome to Ruthie's Ruthless Tales. Go on, grab a slice of fair dinkum, Australia. Get your dose of Ruthie and put a smile on your dial. <laughs>